Wherever we see a lot of industrial pasteurized milk, we see a direct relationship with suppressed raw milk. In New Wisconsin, for instance, for instance the United States, 12,000 dairies have no legal raw milk at all. Not even access to raw milk with cow shares because of the fact that processors don't get to process raw milk. It's unprocessed. It's about market protection and the fact that um, they want to have control of this cheap milk so they can make these value-added enhanced products to sell to people. Because if you have raw milk, that's highly value-added in its own right. And they can't uh, create some magical wand that says your milk is going to be wonderful and safe from factory farm milk that's commingled together. They can't do that magically. You can't fake raw milk. It takes hard work. It takes ingenuity. It takes creativity. It takes protocols and testing to do a good job of raw milk. They know what you're doing. Pasteurization is an 18th century solution to an 18th century problem. We can do a lot better. We have the technology. We have the know-how. We know about conditions. We know about the genome of the milk. We know about the incompatibility of pasteurized dairy products in children. Because children do not have a developed di digestive tract. They need the whole food of the raw milk. Breast milk is raw milk. So there's a reason why uh, breast milk has up to 700 different kinds of bacteria, including pathogens from healthy breast milk. There's a reason why it's enzymatic, enzymatic rich and full fat. It's because that's what an infant, a mammal, needs to thrive and survive. It's the first food of life. To quote Ron Schmidt, or uh, Mike Schmidt, he said, raw milk is love and it's war. Because it's the first food of life, it's what we give our babies to thrive. It's also war because we have to fight now to get it. So it's uh, a place right now in a, in a little benchmark in history where raw milk in New Zealand or Australia is uh, being fought over. We all know and we love its value. And I would encourage you to get together as a group you already have with ARM, but get together even further and listen to your lobbyist uh, advisory this evening and, and band together as a group. Because the one thing I've got, the most powerful thing I have in my war chest, um, even though I try to make peace as much as possible, is the moms and the truth. The other side might have the guns and the money, but I got the moms and the truth. And, I, and you win every fight with that because you bring forward the truth and the moms say he's right and we'll die for him because we need it for our families. So we see this battle going on and it's truly a battle when you have mothers saying, I want this food for my family and somebody says you can't have it. Oh my gosh. A mother lying in her cubs. So you need to become that fighting force that gets behind your producers that are well organized, that have a plan, and can prove their plan works. And we offer the Raw Milk Institute to you uh, as a proven international plan. It's got nine producers internationally now. It's only been around four and a half years. But it has the data. And it's associated with producers in Germany and producers in other parts of the world, in Italy, that have actually proven that over long periods of time you can produce low risk, safe raw milk for the masses to really enjoy. Uh, because the point of tonight is to get you all out there lobbying. We're at the point now that I think, you know, this is the perfect time in Australia, and particularly in Victoria, for us to make use of the resources that we've been putting together at the AR and M, um, and actually go out and convince people. I think there's a couple of factors that are coalescing to make this a really ripe time for change in the regulations. <clears throat> like I was saying, the first is what Mark is talking about. We're behind the rest of the world. The rest of the world has actually already either taken steps or they've already had the regulations in place to ensure that raw milk can be safely provided to consumers. The fact that New Zealand has raw milk and that there's media around that at the moment and that there's a strong discussion in New Zealand about how that raw milk can be, um, can continue to be produced in a way that's safe is really great for us. I think the other thing that's changed recently um, is the, the rules around raw cheeses. This fight has half been fought for us. Really, we've got regulations that Dairy Food Safe Victoria are already working with to make sure that raw milk can be produced and used for the production of raw milk cheeses within Australia. We've got rules that allow the import of raw milk cheeses to Australia from other countries. We didn't have those a long time ago. That was a fight that took a bit of time, but it's laid the groundwork because we can very easily point to those and say, we're not talking about reinventing the wheel. We're just talking about extending regulations that you've already agreed to and you've already found merit in. The, the way that we can get political change is by getting our elected officials to change the rules and to tell Dairy Food Safe to shift their regulations and to start regulating the, uh, the production and then the transport and sale of raw milk. So what we've produced is a research pack which is available online and that's got all of the best and most up-to-date research about the safety of raw milk, 
the way it's been regulated in other countries, including it looks a lot to America. It's got information about the economic impact of actually opening up this new, emerging, exciting market uh, for small-scale dairy farmers. And it's got information on the health benefits of the, uh, the consumption of raw milk, the things that Mark was talking about around the impacts on children and also the impacts on other things like eczema, not just asthma, eczema, gut issues, a whole range of issues that there's a lot of evidence about. I agree with you completely. I, I'm absolutely a proponent, proponent sorry, of the freedom argument. I think that I should have the freedom to choose the foods that I consume and to make educated decisions about the safety of those foods and the benefits that they'll bring to my life and the life of my family. That's not the argument that's going to win us raw milk in Victoria. The arguments that will win us raw milk in Victoria are that Australia is behind global best practice. That every other country except Canada has procedures and rules in place whereby raw milk can be safely produced, sold and consumed by, um, by humans. We've got the argument that the rules already exist. Why do we have this system of laws that doesn't make sense in Australia? That you can buy raw goat's milk legally in four states, but you can't buy raw cow's milk in those states. Why in some states, um, you know, is, is there a system for regulating raw goat's milk that we can't just apply for the other states? Why can we have raw cheese, but we can't have raw milk? Those are the, the points that will actually win us the attention of the policymakers and help us affect change. I respect of doing something else, but they can't make this change themselves. They can't do it. They can put a little bit of upward pressure on the decision makers in, in government, but they can't do it until they actually get the decision coming up, coming down. Sorry, from the uh, from the policymakers that this is something that will be changed in the uh, legislation that we have that currently prohibits the sale of raw milk for human consumption. So we really do need to work together, and I can't emphasise enough how important it is to really stay engaged during this process. Don't just take the pro forma letter and have one meeting with the MP and let that be it. If we're going to actually get this through, it's going to take a lot of collaboration and a bit of energy. Also, don't forget, don't forget, the great science coming out of Europe. The Parsifal study, the Gabriella study, the Pasteur study, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, Koala Covert, um, the LMU study that came out just last year, all showing that you have a dramatic reduction of asthma, allergies, eczema, ear infections and colds with children that drink raw milk. And the tremendous gifts to mothers that drink raw milk during pregnancy. Because when you measure the cord blood of the delivered baby, what do you know, the IgG, the high immunoglobulin uh, rates that actually protect the child for life from asthma. In the United States, tragically, 11 children die every day from asthma. But yet the universe, the university studies in Europe show that asthma truly redu has reduced dramatically with children that drink raw milk. So lean on the science, Moms, dads, families, get behind your producers. Producers become organized, create a good proposal, go in and propose it seriously, firmly, fairly, professionally, and ask for them to support you. About that. We also took questions, had a great dialogue about baby steps to go forward in Australia. The elements, the DNA is here. You can do it. I'm fully confident you can do it. I know you can do it. I feel it. I can sense it. it I can taste it. It's there. The raw milk I had 30 minutes ago was absolutely delicious. I could taste call from levels, it was fantastic. <laughs> so, it's up to you as a group to stand up, show up, and speak up, and make your government accountable to you, the consumer. The one thing that's happened here, and it's really tragic, is industry decides for you what you're gonna eat. It's, decide you, it's, it's, it's time for you to decide, as a consumer, how your dollar is voted, and support that, and absolutely attack Go after it yourself, responsibly, appropriately, non-violently, if you can, if you can control yourselves. But do the best you can to go for, go forward, and actually propose good proposals, and, st and and be there. Show up. Show up. Show up at the meetings.